I'm Dr. Elena Klemenko, and I am a functional medicine physician in Manhattan, New York City, in Midtown. And we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, but uh, I'll give you a little quick presentation on constipation and uh, what to do about this from the functional medicine standpoint. Welcome to our traditional live question session. We're going to talk about the natural solution uh, for constipation from their functional medicine standpoint. As I said, my name is Dr. Elena Klemenko, and I would like to present to you their, how are we evaluating and treating patients with constipation differently from conventional medicine. So we're going to talk about what is constipation, who is affected by constipation. Many of you probably know the symptoms, but a lot of people think they're constipated. Uh, not and some people think that they are not constipated and they're actually very much constipated. We also will touch upon a variety of the causes of constipation as well as the treatment options from conventional medicine standpoint as well as in functional medicine. And then we'll touch upon uh, what else we offer in our practice here in town Manhattan, uh, healthy, wealthy, and wise uh, medical uh, clinics. So um, did you know that actually more than 16% of Americans and a third of those older than 60 suffer from chronic constipation? Yes, sometimes uh, it is more of the elderly or people up to 60, people are over uh, that category of, of um, age category who suffer from constipation. And especially women suffer from constipation more than men. Or maybe we just familiar with that. Women probably know about it more and uh, make a big deal out of it or raise the flag and concern and men don't. But 16% of Americans experience it. That's pretty, pretty big and robust number. So what is the constipation? So constipation can be defined by a variety of their uh, symptoms. It could be just infrequent bowel movements uh, with a or with, with or without difficulty of passing stool. So some people might be um, having bowel movements every two, three days. Uh, it's um, not uncommon people come and they have a bowel movements once a week and they think it's normal. They've been doing it all their lives, except for now they have a, some chronic medical illnesses. And it's generally described as a, having fewer than three bowels, move, bowel movements per week and uh, associated with excessive straining and oh, stool can be very hard. So it's obviously, those are their sign of their constipation. And uh, the reason for constipation could be variety. So usually it's something that blocks the colon or rectum, that outlet uh, from the gastrointestinal tract. And it could be related to problems related to nerves around the, their uh, the outlet of the gastrointestinal tract, specifically colon and rectum. Uh, muscles, the muscular, the pelvic muscle floor is heavily involved in the process of uh, uh, elimination and evacuation of the stool. And therefore, we always evaluate the muscles. And pelvic uh, muscle floor is, is a very important muscular diaphragm that controls the regular regularity and the full elimination of the bowels. Uh, and that's why sometimes women get constipated after childbirth uh, because the pelvic floor uh, alignment can be um, altered or damaged during the childbirth, vaginal childbirth, as well as C-sections. The conditions that affect hormones in the body for example, uh, low thyroid function will reduce the peristalsis or their, uh, the movement of their uh, gastrointestinal content through their gastrointestinal tract. And therefore, if uh, there's a sluggish movement, there will be no regular uh, bowel movements. Diabetes, uh, or specifically insulin diabetes, insulin resistance, or Diabetes will create sluggishness of the peristalsis because body, it's a self-regulation mechanism of the body. Body doesn't want the food to go quickly through their gastrointestinal tract, so the sugar does not get absorbed really quickly. And as a result, there's a, a sluggish digestion and sluggish peristalsis, therefore constipation. 
There's also a variety of the risk factors that we know uh, that can contribute to constipation. Being a female, believe it or not, is a big risk factor. So I don't know, again, is it because we're just so much more in tune with the body and understand the importance of ev evacuation, or maybe it is something related to XX chromosome. Being an older adult is another big factor. So being dehydrated is a great contributor and big risk factor. That's why many of us get constipated during the traveling. Um, so beside the emotional factor of traveling, being in the new bathroom and feeling uncomfortable, also we get dehydrated during the traveling. Eating a diet that is low in the fiber is a big contributor, and sometimes just fixing that improve, uh, improve their outcomes and outflows. Uh, remember their famous saying, apple a day, apple is a very big fibrous fruit. Apple a day keeps doctors away because... As we know, the saying "keep your bowels empty and head full" uh, is a really is a good, really good indicator for eating fiber and a lot of fiber and at least an apple a day. Uh, getting little uh, or no physical activities is another risk factor. So, being active is a very important part of my prescription for my patients, as well as taking certain medications. A lot of pharmaceuticals that, unfortunately, our uh, elderly have to take will constipate them. Um, opioids, antidepressants, uh, sedatives, some of their uh, medications for high blood pressure can have that side effect. So this is a part that commonly ignored in, in conventional setting. Uh, and also having medical conditions such as depression or eating disorders will predispose us to their constipation. So what are the treatment options? Of course, we know that there's a tons of different laxatives, over-the-counter laxatives, uh, and enemas that can be utilized in conventional medicine. Unfortunately, enemas are actually utilized less and less. Uh, but in functional medicine, we uh, we operate with a little bit different uh, treatment modalities. So we uh, definitely prescribe significant amount of water. We prescribe different forms of fiber, soluble, non-soluble. We prescribe certain uh, botanicals like cascara, senna, uh, cape aloe. Uh, probiotics is a very big, um, uh, you know, very uh, fancy word now. And then everybody knows about uh, microbiome and how it affects our bowels and microflora and therefore peristalsis and evacuation, as well as uh, common minerals like magnesium. Magnesium citrate is very famous for its um, purgative effect, and even vitamin C. If you take a large dose of vitamin C, you actually will help a bowel movement. So what are the preventative strategies that we recommend in functional medicine? Diet. Diet is always first. Food is the medicine. You are what you eat. All those um, ancient wisdom we all familiar with to us. So eating plenty of high fibrous food uh, in your diet, and including beans, vegetables, small amount of fruit or fruit that are full with the fiber, whole grains, cereals, and bran. Sometimes their bran is also a great fibrous source. Eat, eat, eating less processed food our, and less food with their processed flowers, especially the white flour, can be really constipating. Um, so eating less dairy and eating less meat, because especially with age, our digestive strength of our gastrointestinal tract is lower. So we cannot break down, down the fibers of the meat, uh, the muscular fibers, and therefore we get constipated. And of course, drinking plenty of water, at least half of your weight in ounces. If you do that, um, for elderly, it might be a little bit lower, um, uh, lower uh, uh, demand for that to meet that uh, quantity, but at least eight glasses of water will resolve 50% of the constipation in elderly. Staying active as much as possible and trying to get regular exercises. This is something that is extremely important for their normal healthy bowel movements uh, on a daily basis. Trying to manage stress because when we are stressed, we hold the stress in the gut, 
and we uh, contract those muscles and we are in the sympathetic uh, state of mind, we cannot relax and digest, which is the function of the parasympathetic nervous system that helps us to digest, helps us to eliminate, helps us to repair and restore. So, and also something that we are all guilty of, at least, especially in the younger age, when we are ignoring the urge to, to defecate. When you have an urge for the, to go to the bathroom, we have, we have to utilize that. This is the moment when our body is communicating to us, it's time to go and eliminate. But sometimes we're in the middle of the meeting. Sometimes we're in the middle of the phone conversation. Try to don't try to acknowledge and honor your body's bodily calls for those urges. It's also very helpful to create a regular schedule for bowel movements, especially after the meal. If you start training your body to a specific pattern, it will remember it. Majority of the people will eliminate early in the morning as soon as they wake up. Why? Because there's a two major peristaltic waves that are happening in our body. One of them happens actually early in the morning, right before we wake up. That bowel starts waking up even before we are awakened, and it moves the big peristaltic wave. And as we get up, we uh, we kind of under the law of gravity, and the bowels uh, can uh, give us a signal. Oh, it's time to go and defecate. So it's not uncommon especially in the young individual and healthier individuals to go and have it bowel movements early in the morning for others it could be trained routine so don't ignore that so when we are addressing constipation we we're leaning on our famous uh five r approach you know, to the gi issue so it's it's approach that is applicable to variety of the gut Issues. We discuss the same approach in the IV, in the treatment of irritable bowel disease, in the treatment of SIBO, in the treatment of uh, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. It's all the same famous remove, replace, reestablish, repair, and rebalance. So when we talk about re removing, we're talking about elimination of the triggers that can cause constipation and improve detoxification. So improve their uh, motility of the gut with a variety of their uh, nutraceuticals or botanicals, things like ginger or artichoke. Those are your natural movers. Those, if you eat artichoke, if you eat, incorporate ginger in your diet, those are the uh, nutrients that will normalize and regulate the peristalsis of your gut. Then we're talking about replacing, replacing what is missing. And again, it's not uncommon that people in 60s start having more constipation because at that age of our lives, we're losing the digestive power of our gut. Our hydrochloric acid is low. Our digestive enzymes are not uh, excreted in the same quantities as when we are 20. So we need some digestive help. So it's not uncommon that people with... Um, in this 40s start need their digestive support. We need a little bit of hydrochloric acid. We need digestive enzymes, pancreatic enzymes sometimes, uh, bile acid, uh, something that stimulates the bile secretion. The best thing for actually for elderly is, is to digest the bitters, digestive bitters. There's a, a whole bunch of the bitter herbs that if you consume them before your meal, you stimulate the secretion of their um, of the digestive juices and then we want to reestablish their lost healthy microbiome uh, for that purpose we should consume plenty of fermented vegetables we can also utilize the help of the good probiotics with a wide spectrum of the uh, different microbiome mi microbes that will replenish and reestablish your healthy microbiome but don't forget to give the food for those probiotics because the external probiotics will live only for about two weeks in your gut. You need to really give them food and, and hospitable environment in the form of fibers so they can eat, procreate, multiply, and find a hospitable environment in your gut. And then we want to repair the gut lining. So there's a variety of the product that we use for that, herbal as well as the nutritional. 
And of course, rebalance. That God-brain connection, that God-brain access has been well described since 2009, even in the conventional journals. So Journal of Gastroenterology was the first magazine that, uh, you know, professional journal that published the connection with the God and brain. So connecting God and brain for proper nervous system messaging and being in the learning the relaxed state that helps us to digest and eliminate. So all those far, uh, five R approach uh, system is really, really important. Briefly, I just want to tell you about the case from my practice. Uh, this is Arlene. She's 65 years old. Obviously, she's been suffering from the heart stools that um, she's experienced three for five, three, five, every three, five days. She knows it's not healthy. It's not her typical um, pattern. And she uh, complains that she feels full. She feels like she is uncomfortable. She feels toxic. And she has incomplete evacuation of her um, fecal masses. She also has abdominal discomfort. And uh, it's not getting better after trying typical laxatives. She, she also, from her history, we learned that she's a coffee drinker. And coffee, remember, coffee dehydrates us even more. So that's why if you drink coffee in the morning, try to minimize the quantity and make sure you drink at least two, three times more uh, of the quantity of the coffee with water. So start with water, drink three glasses of water before you have your cup of coffee. Uh, she is on a low fiber diet. And to be honest, she says, I'm not even hungry. I don't eat too much. She goes to her primary care who runs several expensive tests, can't find anything. Uh, in his opinion, and he sends her to the gastrointestinal specialist who does uh, endoscopy from upper, from lower. Nothing is uh, found, um, so there's no problems he can find, and he actually prescribes her conventional laxatives. Um, and and if she has pain, she prescribes her some Tylenol. Well, obviously, Arlene has she's she's been around for a while. She's 65 years old, so she knows that there's something else she can do. And she learns uh, from, uh, from her friend that there's a functional medicine. And that functional medicine looks at the root cause. And so she wants to get an address. That's how she came to us. And so I evaluate her, and I find in her testing that her thyroid is actually not that normal. It's uh, kind of on the sluggish side. So, and her iodine is low and her zinc is low and her selenium is low. So all those very important nutrients that determine a healthy thyroid function are kind of uh, on the lower spectrum. So what did I prescribe for her? We talked about the importance of water intake, at least half a weight of her uh, daily weight and, and ounces. Uh, or at least hydrate before she drinks her coffee. We shift her diet a little bit. We give her more vegetables uh, and fruit, uh, somewhere between four to one ratio. So four servings of vegetables to one serving of fruit. Uh, we gave her some gentle exercise to activate her peristalsis, uh, some breathing exercises, some yoga that are great for that. She got some natural supplementation of of psyllium and she got a protein shakes with the two tablespoons of their ground flaxseed that she would implement on a daily basis. We gave her some probiotics, enzymes, and to support her slow digestion. And we taught her how to do the breathing and exercising exercises and relaxation techniques. So, and, and then her symptoms got better. So we basically uh, took her through this five R program and or our GI health program that in, in, involves their uh, very in, interesting and extensive initial intake and evaluation of the patient. We spent at least 90 minutes with our new patient. We ordered some, uh, we usually order some tests. In this case, we would order probably stool test. Uh, we'll recommend some diet and lifestyle intervention after the first visit of the initial intake. Sometimes we recommend some supplements. And then we start, we get into work. So for their next 
30 days to a year, we work with a health coach, uh, patient uh, learning a lot about the physiology and about the functional medicine approach and the root cause medicine. We give some homework and some resources for people to learn and understand the major concepts of detoxification, of the gut health. And then we do the follow-up work. So follow-up work could be reviewing the tests and also ordering new tests. And we also offer group visits for our patients uh, with the health coaches, which is a great um, time saving and uh, a great way to incorporate um, learning experience for our patients at a reasonable price. So how can you take a next step in um, investigating your root causes of mental illnesses? So you can schedule a free discovery call with us. Or we now actually, we implemented uh, a Calendly uh, schedule. So you can click on the link that can be provided by our office and you can schedule at your convenience 15 minutes discovery call with my staff, uh, with my administrative staff or uh, my clinical staff. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter uh, or follow up uh, on Instagram. And remember, we are open to the new clients. Uh, if you want to uh, learn about our practice uh, or if you are existing clients, I see that we have a lot of patients, existing patients here on the call. Uh, please refer your friends because friends don't want friends to go to the bad doctors. So if you're happy with us, please refer to us. By You can actually scan this uh, code, QR code on the screen to um, send your friend uh, a link. To our practice and kindly if, if you want to your gut to be investigated you can scan this barcode and get a link to their uh, questionnaire and send it to us so we can uh, help you to uh, take the right steps towards resolving your uh, gut health issues and just to say a few words about our practice we implement a lot of group coaching. We help our patients to learn about their genetics. Uh, specifically, this 3x4 genetic test will help you to understand your vulnerable uh, spots in the genome. And we can teach you how to live and support those vulnerabilities throughout your life so you don't manifest your the chronic illnesses as long as possible or avoid them altogether. And uh, then also we do offer some other uh, great uh, uh, medical modalities, like for example, this pulse electromagnetic field therapy, uh, which is a great device that helps us not only uh, evaluate, but also treat patients based on um, using the bio biofeedback. So it's an excellent complement to any type of medical uh, treatment therapy that is utilized not only by conventional doctors, but also uh, not only by uh, integrative doctors, but also more and more by conventional doctors. I recently met a podiatrist who uses Undermed for all of her post-operative patients so they heal faster and there's a less complications because their energy medicine and pulse electromagnetic field therapy is the energy medicine. I think it's a, it's a medicine of the future. We're going to be uh, utilizing more and more of energy instead of pills and medications to help our patients to be more in balance. So, and I'm just really excited to present a new line of product that I just implemented. And in relations to uh, um, uh, digestion, we uh, launching this great product, Hist Digest, that helps people to digest histamine that is naturally present in food. So some people do react to histamine in food and uh, a simple trial of this enzyme can help a lot of people to feel better. So consider to um, read and learn about their uh, his digest and then Neuromag, which is our uh, neuromagnesium, magnesium that is crossing brain, a uh, blood brain barrier and helps people to get uh, sleep and stress relief and uh, uh, better resilience. 
Uh, also, super omega-3. Everybody should be on omega-3 fatty acids. As you know, it's a strong anti-inflammatory. Why is this omega better than others? Because it has a three times higher absorption than regular fish oil, and it's made from the really clean sources of fish. As you know, fish is contaminated. Even the wild fish is contaminated with uh, plastics, uh, with heavy metals, and a variety of other toxins. So we uh, favor this product for people who want to reduce the inflammation and re reduce the inflammation because inflammation and aging is basically equal, uh, different side of the same equation.